application to attend the affordability in biomedical devices in the country. Recently, MIT has funded a team at Cement along with Indian Institute of Information Technology and Management Kerala, Kerala Startup Mission and Government of Kerala to establish the Center for Excellence in Intelligent Inter Internet of, of Things Sensor budget 42 crore for the period of 2021 to 2026 under this center of excellence. Dr. Karun Kashmir is training the develop indigenous material and medical electronics device for health care diagnosis application. Before starting as career, as at this summit, he has completed as postdoctoral research. PhD at CSIR National Chemical Laboratory Pune 2016 and work as postdoctoral research PDF at the Department of Printed Electronics and Engineering, Sichuan National University, Kiwa Kumar University, Seoul, South Korea for two years. During his research career, he has received several international awards and funds. He is a recipient of the prestigious Korean Research Foundation fellowship by National Research Foundation of South Korea in 2017 and pre present international fellow by Chinese Academy of Science. Throughout his career, he has published more than 50 international peer-reviewed research paper and two U.S. patent to his credit. This lecture is organized for the benefit of faculty and student faculty under mighty sponsored project in Dallas creation of R&D culture in electronics material among SCSC students in Maharashtra, also under the auspicious version of Azadika Amrut Mahotsav, Swacheta Pokhada, 2022. With the above small introduction of today's speaker, students are eagerly uh, waiting to, to you, sir, without taking too much time between you and student, I kindly request to sir, please deliver the talk. Yeah, thank you so much. Uh, I will share my screen. Uh, yeah. Yes, please just uh, My screen is visible now? Yes, sir. Okay, that's great. Okay, uh, first of all, uh, I thank uh, the organizers for uh, giving this wonderful uh, opportunity to discuss or to uh, uh, interact with the uh, students from various colleges. Uh, before starting, my, I, I hope my voice is audible, is right? Can someone confirm my voice is audible? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. No problem, sir. Okay. Yeah. Uh, sir. Before start my talk, I wanted to uh, give a kind of a, a general information that I got tested COVID positive three days back. So my voice is actually gone. So, but I try to uh, 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 provide as clear as possible. Uh, even though I cannot spend uh, a more louder voice, I hope uh, I'm making my points clear with the voice, whatever I have today. So thank you so much for uh, uh, this opportunity. And uh, either I don't know Hindi or Marathi to interact with the uh, uh, local languages, but uh, mostly I will be using uh, English as a uh, language to discuss. So kindly bear with me. <clears throat> so, yes, sir, you can speak Dr. English. Arun. English. Yeah, 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 fine. Uh, myself, Dr. Arun, uh, I'm a, a, a scientist working in uh, CMET as introduced by the, uh, the uh, panel members. So today I'm going to discuss about uh, semiconductor technology in India and how that technology has been used for attaining uh, affordable healthcare. Like uh, affordable healthcare means healthcare at low cost. Why? Because the country like India needs a kind of a very cost. low cost material and low cost devices for any medical diagnosis because our per capita income or, or the, the family-wise income is too less compared to the very developed countries. So we cannot spend more than a thousand or two thousand rupees for a one simple test in any diagnostic lab. So India is looking forward affordability. That means very low cost, a cheap diagnostic tool for healthcare. 
uh, let's say if you are thinking about a temperature sensor so if you are looking into the market even in 100 rupees itself now the temperature sensors are available whereas if you are thinking about uh, ecg and uh, other other high end technologies uh, even we need to spend more than 1000 rupees for taking one ecg so this is a kind of a current scenario that most of the hard diseases are become more costliest diseases to diagnose why because the availability of uh, equipment the availability of a resources too less whereas the population wise the kind of a, uh, the number we have in india is too high so we cannot meet everyone's requirement at low cost that is a main problem india is facing now so as a scientist working in a uh, government lab uh, what are the steps our group has taken or our institute has taken to solve this question so uh, this is a kind of a overlay of uh, my talk so i will just say kind of a uh what what sort of uh, uh, um, uh, background we have in india so if you look at uh, uh, there are more than um, several crores and crores of business involved in healthcare because we all know that whenever it comes into health we always fear a lot even for small fever and cold now we people are fully worried why because due to the covid so many kind of organizations companies uh, corporates taking this as advantage to loot money from the people that's the reason our government has taken a very good initiative that means they kept a kind of a standard if you are selling any medical equipments or medicines in india there are certain protocols they have given so it should not be more than this cost it should be having the lifetime expectancy of this much so it should not be having any expiry of uh, uh, the lifetime all those regulations they have given so by using that our government is really saved quite a amount of a good a good amount of money in a recent year if you look at the essential medicines right from the healthcare like a heart care uh, medicines cancer therapy medicines so from that due to this policies our government is able to save about 5066 crore in the past 6 uh, years and similarly several other protocols our our our, our uh, 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 government is taking to save the money for the people but if you look at in the other side the same government is spending a lot of money in a research especially in a health research so in the right side i have given a, a diagram uh, which shows that how much of a uh, 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 money has been spent in a health research so if you look at due to covid the past 2 and 3 years we have a lot of the government has a lot of lot of money in the health research why because they understood that the importance of people's health so that made a government to put a lot of money in this and this ultimately make a question why indian government how to make more expenditure on health research and why a health research is like us how to be uh, focused on on health diagnostics so this is a very big question comes into the mind is right so the main reason is india is a first victimized country in cardiology that means whatever the heart issue every one in 10 people are affected with some sort of heart issue in india because of our food culture because of because of our, our diet because of our lifestyle we are more affected in two diabetes cardiac diseases and also a lot of coronary uh, stents there are a lot of other diseases associated with the heart is heavily heavily affected in india and that's the reason our government is now awake and they put a lot of money and effort to have this kind of uh, uh, research programs to identify the cheap material and uh, very low cost uh, protocols and uh, devices to monitor the health so that is the main motto behind uh, our government and they are also funding to several labs and uh, the other reason is because if you look at uh, import and export because import and export means nothing but how much we are depending on other countries on medical uh, devices if you look at a medical device a medical consumables like a diaper a disposable glove and uh, some other kind of a consumable Uh, our india indian manufacturers are having good amount of uh, source our manufacturing hub by which we are not fully dependent on other country whereas if you look at the electronic equipments the second part of this particular diagram if you look at 
more than 3,886 million dollars we are importing. So this dark red is uh, maroon is indicating that we are fully importing these items, electronic equipments. And at the same time, if you look at what we have in India, with the reliable source, what you have uh, for a semiconductor technology, we just have one third of our need. Only thousand sixty-five million dollars of uh, uh, manufacturing only we are doing in electronic equipment. This makes minus two eight two, and that means the trade balance is going in negative. If you look at the second part of this particular diagram, it shows our trade balance is negative only in electronic equipments for medical healthcare. That means we are fully dependent on other countries. So this give a big alarm to our scientific society, how to make into positive, how to achieve this, to make India self-sustaining uh, to the healthcare diagnostic. Especially we are a cement center for materials for electronics technology. What in terms of electronics, what in terms of material we are going to contribute to make this negative balance into the positive. So that is a uh, motto behind our government and our government organizations, and as well as scientists like us, to boost a self-sustainability and to achieve something to the society for the healthcare. Now I will come into my talk. So in my talk, I will be going to discuss about two sensors which we have, we have recently developed uh, in our lab. So one is cardiac sensor, that is nothing but a, a ECG, electrocardiogram. Mm -hmm. I'm sure that most of you guys would have uh, taken a ECG in your lifetime at least once. So you may know what are the difficulties, what are the problems you have in taking ECG and recording ECG. So I will also discuss about that and how we overcome that particular uh, problems associated with ECG. And also in India, there are more than 25% of people are disabled. They have some sort of a, a loss of a body part or a vision problem hearing issue. So such kind of a disabilities also recently has, has been tremendous, tremendously increased. So we also made certain devices, sensors for disabled people. So these two specific sensors developed in India, developed in our lab, we are, I'm going to discuss in this particular talk. So uh, I will move one by one. Before that, I will give a very basic because most of you guys are from master's background. So I will give a, a, a very brief impression in this particular slide. So uh, whenever we are speaking about uh, sensors, there are three main components will be involved. One is metals, another one is metal oxides or uh, semiconductors, other is dielectric material. So here today, my whole talk will be fully focused on semiconductors. Okay, we all know very basic science background of uh, conductors, semiconductors and insulator. This all categorized based on the band gap. If you talk about the conductors, conductor doesn't have any described uh, band gap because the overlapping of uh, valence and conduction band will be there. As a result, these materials are allowing the charges to move very fast with less amount of time. So that's why it is called as conductor. That means there is no discrete band gaps. Both valence and conduction band will be merged. The top left, uh, the figure I have shown for a conductor. The second component or a part of a material is semiconductor. Semiconductor means which will be having an intermediate uh, nature compared to the conductor and insulator, which means it has a certain band gap. That band gaps are narrow in nature. That means which will be having a less than or near to one electron volt difference between the valence and conduction band. In these levels, the hopping of charges, the, the, the charge movement or uh, uh, the, the charge transfer will be quite familiar and faster, but it is not as like a metal, it will be having intermediate. So this energy level should be within one to two electron volt. And this material adopt this particular band gap is called as semiconductor. And if you look at the electrical characteristic of this material is very uh, uh, interesting. If you look the IV characteristic, like the current and voltage characteristic, for metals, it will always obey the Ohm's law. That means it will show linear dependency of current with respect to the voltage. That's called as a Ohm's law. 
any conducting material possesses ohms law whereas if you are coming to the semiconducting material it never falls purely with the ohms law alone until certain region it will form ohms law that means in lower voltages it will have a linearity as like a ohms law but after certain voltage it will undergo a threshold that means after that there will not be much change in the voltage or current dependency so this behavior is very unique in semiconductor material and due to this behavior this material is acting as a key in many of the sensor devices why it is a key why because in any sensors there will be two electrode and it will be sandwiched by the semiconductor material so if you are making a conducting metals for as a kind of a active material and connecting with the two metals in a 2n it will always short why because positive and negative pole if you are connecting with the conducting wire it will short we all know that whereas if you are connecting the semiconducting wires into the positive and negative pole it never short instead of that it will create certain exceptional phenomenon called exciton formation phonon formation photon formation and these excitons phonons and photons are very much essential to study the state of material to study the nature of material so that's why the semiconducting materials are very peculiar because of this iv character okay so in a simple conductor it will be linear whereas in a semiconductor it will be forming a sigmoidal type of curve is called a sigmoidal curve and due to this nature it has a very good electrical properties and as well as a material properties and these advantages we are taking and we are using in our sensor why because sensor always have to be placed on some object let's say if you are using the sensor for biomedical application it must be kept on a human body is right so anything if you wanted to put it on a human body the first portion which is touching is skin is right if you are wearing the watch the watch the base will be contact with the skin only am i correct so the first and foremost body part touch for the diagnosis is the skin even though if you are going to the doctor and showing the doctor you are not i am not feeling well because of fever means they first put a ther thermometer or a, a ir thermometer on you and they will check for the skin temperature body temperature so there the whole sensor the temperature sensor will touch your skin only and similarly if you are going that doctor i have a, a rashes in your skin then they will always go with the examine by using a various palpation or occupation therapy to identify what kind of a, a problem you have in your skin so the skin is the first contact point for any diagnosis now i already mentioned in my first title itself i am going to make a affordable healthcare device so so healthcare devices means it must be put it on some object that is nothing but human body that is on skin now whatever the devices you are going to keep it must be compatible with the skin it must be likely with the skin that's the first and foremost thing a researcher have to keep it in mind how the skin responds if you take iv curve of a skin and if you take that uh, comparison of iv characteristic uh, with respect to semiconductor bo both are more or less same if you look at the iv curve uh, looks for the skin taken for a different person like a uh, gabriel gandhi akal singh this is study was already reported so they measured the skin potential changes with respect to various input so what they found that it was exactly following as like that of a semiconductor that means our skin is a semiconductor but in our case we are going to make a skin like sensor device that means artificial skin that means we need to identify the material which are mimicking which are replicating the skin so to as a chemist we understand what kind of a material we undergo some sort of uh, semiconductivity which will be replica of a human skin and we also tested in our lab to attain a similar semiconducting behavior and that material we used to, to develop for the sensor so that is the first point i wanted to make clear okay now i directly go into the product what we have developed so first one is a electrocardiogram so as i already mentioned many of you might have taken ecg uh, uh, in 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 your lifetime at least once and i will give a very brief background about what is the status of 
uh, cardiovascular disease, the heart diseases in the world. So if you look at this particular slide, it is the world's number one killer. Why it is? More than 18.6 million of a death every year is happening because of cardiovascular disease. It is about 33% of the death in the world is occurring only because of heart disease. So that gives a kind of a big number, right? 33 percentage of, that means every 33 person in 100 is died because of a cardiovascular disease. So now the question comes, do we have enough resources to measure this many numbers, this many millions of people? If you're asking this, that question, for sure it is no. Why? Because we are lacking kind of a sensing, diagnosing uh, a heart on time. We have to always book, we need to always consult with the doctor. We need to always depend on someone to record your ECG and then to go for any conclusion. So that makes many people avoid going to the doctors and diagnostic center to self-check their body. Until unless we affect with some disease, we never ever go for self-check. That is a problem in India. And due to that, many deaths happen without diagnosing itself. So that is a background of this particular ECG. So in our lab, we made our own ECG and we also tested our ECGs simply in our mobile. Instantly, it will give an ECG in your mobile and through WhatsApp, you can just uh, send your ECG to your doctor and they can uh, instantaneously see your ECG and they can analyze what kind of a problem you have. And this is what a device we have developed. So I will come to the uh, kind of what are the difficulties we have so far. Okay, if anyone have experience in taking ECG, the first thing is that to take ECG, the person have to remove their dress. That means especially the shirt because the ECG electrode, they will be keeping directly on body, on skin. They will apply some gel and they will put it. For a male, it doesn't make big problem. But if you are considering about a female, it may be a lot of privacy issues will be there. A lot of problems will be associated to remove cloth and all. So that comfortability is still a big question to take ECG. Similarly, it doesn't mean that if you are record, if you wanted to record ECG means immediately it never ever possible. You need to go to diagnostic center. You need to stand in a long queue. And then to take one ECG at least 10 to 15 minutes, you need to be there in a diagnostic room. And before that, you need to be there in a line a big queue will be there because our, our Indian uh, diagnosis center always have a heavy lines for testing uh, or diagnostic any samples. So the time also goes waste in a diagnosis center medical laboratory. And also the, the kind of a dependency we have. That means after taking ECG, they will do a printout. That printout we need to collect. We need to again go to the doctor to show it again for a consulting to identify what are the issues with the CCG. That means multiple visits we need to do. First, before taking ECG to get a, a kind of a consent, we need to get a doctor. After that, we need to go to diagnostic center. They will give a printout. Then we have to come back and meet the doctor. This is a very general and common practice we have in India. So this dependency is also very big problematic. And the fourth one is availability. In India, there is a very good scheme called primary health centers. Each and every villages have to have a health center. How many of our health centers have an ECG? Definitely not less than one person only having an ECG in a diagnostic or a primary health center. Mostly they will have a maximum temperature sensor only, the thermometer only. They will not have beyond it. So this shows that the availability of equipment in the urban or semi-rural areas or, or underdeveloped areas, it is very, very less. So the availability is also a big issue. The fifth and foremost thing is that per ECG, Per ECG, how much we are spending so far? If you take Agra, uh, it is in uh, Delhi and Ahmedabad, Allahabad, if you just compare the cost per ECG, it is about 600 rupees. That means to take one test, we need to spend about 600 rupees, which is one day salary of a normal Indian. So which may be not possible for many people to afford it. Still, even though we are in the 20th century, many people may not spend even 600 rupees per test. So this makes our people, uh, the scientists like me to think on how to address all this issue. 
That means if you wanted to address all this issue, means you need to make a device which must be free of cost. Otherwise, we cannot achieve this, is right? Because our country is having such a economical uh, standards and as well as a lot of a population. So how to address this? The best thing is that reducing the cost. How to reduce the cost? We need to make our own material without depending on other country. We need to make our own device. We need to make our own product and we need to sell it in India. That's what. So this is the only way to reduce the cost. And always, if you look at uh, cost reduction, the big question comes whether the efficiency will be same. Because always we always compare them. Always lower cost devices are not good because it will have a lesser efficiency than others. So we should not compromise our efficiency. So this is the aim we are having in our project. So with that, many people may have a question. Sir, I have a wristwatch. I have an MI watch. I have an Apple watch, which is showing the number. What is my heartbeat? What is my heart rate? What is my blood pressure? Everything. Then why unnecessary as a scientist, you are working on BCG? For you specifically, I'm going to say that if you are thinking that your wristwatch is big enough or quite enough to say about your heart means sorry for the noise because it doesn't help anywhere because if you're going to doctor for saying any heart problem no one will say that you buy this uh, uh mi watch and uh, you come back to me with the results no one will say why because the accuracy the kind of a measurement you're doing in a wristwatch is completely different from what ecg measures i will give what is the difference okay so you take two balloons Fill it with the blood, okay, fill it, fill it with the water. Consider these balloons as a uh, heart and the water as a blood, okay. In both the balloon, you are filling the water. In one balloon, you put a hole. In another balloon, just leave it as normal. So in a left side balloon, I made it as a hole. So if you are making a wristwatch type of uh, uh, heart rate monitor, and if you are putting on both the balloons, it will have same data. That means if you are pressing lub and dub, the same rhythmic noise will be there in both the balloons. Whereas in ECG, it is measuring the amount of blood going out and going into the heart. Whereas in a heart rate wrist watch, it measures only what is the vibration of the rhythmic sound, lump and dump. So that will be common whether your heart is having hole, whether your heart is having any block, it will have a same rhythmic pattern. It will have just source of number. Whereas in ECG, it will measure how much is the blood circulating among the body, the whole body. That means if your, your heart is having any holes, there will be a lot of leak. So the blood circulation will be less. So that will clearly seen in ECG. If you look at the ECG graph bottom, so the left side one, wherever the hole is punched, the intensity will vary and as well as the time delay will vary. Whereas if you look at the right side, it will have the same intensity because there is no leakage. So to identify the blocks, to identify the leak in a heart, one must have to go for ECG rather than a risk towards what you have been centrally using for a heart rate. So this is where the big difference. Now I will show why ECG is very important. So I will show on, on a real case record in, record in medical history. So this is the time morning 6.28. The patient has been admitted in the ICU. So if you look at his uh, ECG, it was quite normal. He was very normal until 6.29 for one minute. If you look at 6.29.55 seconds, the heart is heartbeat is become abnormal. Look at it. It was having very hazy peaks here. That shows the heart attack is started initiating. That means the heart is started malfunctioning. And then immediately within one minute, the nurse in the ICU found there is some abnormality in ECG. Immediately they did the CPR test, the CPR uh, uh, treatment where the first aid has been given and the person's heartbeat is restored. Within one minute, I am saying, 6.28, the person is admitted, 6.29, heart attack came, 6.30, it is again regenerated the heartbeat, again back, and 6.30, he became normal. So this all possible to monitor only by using ECG. Your wristwatch never ever say, what is your uh, blood circulation in your body? And what is the block? Uh, present, whereas whether it is in auricles or in ventricles, it never ever so. So these are the examples for each disease, how the ECG looks like. This is a normal ECG. And if you have any heart failure, the peaks positioning and peak amplitude will be changing. So that's how generally the doctors will identify. 
so mostly the heart failure is a very common case that means uh, the heart is having four compartments two auricles and two ventricles so if your heart failure means it is nothing but your ventricles the bottom two layers will be more expanded like a balloon so if it is more expanded what will happen it will take more volume of blood and it will take more time to push out so as a result what will happen you will have a negative ecg the ecg peaks will come down so by look at it doctor will easily say that okay you have a heart failure then by using appropriate medicine they will make you normal and similarly there is another very important disease called pericarditis disease that means there will be a shrinkage in the bottom layer if you look at the bottom ventricles it is given in a blue color here so it will shrink into the very smaller uh, compartments that means the amount of volume of blood present in this ventricles will be lesser is right why because the area is smaller means the blood occupancy will be smaller as a result what will happen look at it the second peak will have a very uh, uh, difference in the baseline if you look at from the baseline it will shifted more than half a times so that shows that your ventricle size is too small they like that several even it's called as aneurysm which is nothing but there is a swelling in your veins let's say you are having a very good pipe water pipe you are having some blocks inside is it easy to pump definitely no is it right so such kind of a blocks it cannot be detected by the wrist watch type sensor only by placing the ecg electrode it will say that which part of your heart is having the block so that can be easily identified by the the rhythmic pattern difference and the kind of a difference in uh, 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 the intensities we can easily identify uh, what kind of a disease they have whether they have a heart failure or a pericarditis or any block all those things we can identify now i come to our lab okay what we have done and how we got this idea to develop our own ecg so it is very important because we we all are science student if a science student is not doing anything for the society no one can do so uh, pay attention to this particular slide away because this is where the basic science is going to come okay <clears throat> so uh, as all of you are science student i am very sure that many of you might have work with the multimeter simple multimeter and when i was very small whenever i see the multimeter i always take uh, that two probe and i will connect with the various part of my body and i will check that some value will fluctuate i am sure anyone everyone might have done the same play whenever we get a multimeter i also did same way okay later i identified that this is what called as ecg you know <laughs> because in our body as i already mentioned our human skin is a semiconductive material whenever you are keeping any probe any metal electrode and a positive and negative lead due to the circulation of a blood it will show some electrical conductivity that's what you are seeing as a number in a multimeter the same concept is there in ecg also in ecg what they will do they will let's say this is a skin okay so the red color skin is there they will apply some gel on your body and they will put some metal electrode and they will put it on various part of your body on chest on legs on and on your uh, uh, hands and also on your shoulders they will keep on various places and they will simply identify what is a blood flow because with respect to blood flow because blood is nothing but electrolytes electrolyte means is the material or a liquid which is having a suspended particles charged particles if you take a water and dissolving the sodium chloride it is called as electrolyte similarly our blood is also having a lot of salts sodium magnesium calcium iron lot of salts are there in our blood also and these suspended metal uh, charged metal particles and as well as a liquid water and lipids everything together makes our blood as a electrolyte in this electrolyte whenever you are having a metal if you are keeping on two places due to the flow because in our whole body the blood is flowing is right it is flowing from the heart to the rest of all body to the toe to the head to the fingers everywhere it is going so by keeping 12 electrodes or six electrodes in various places of our body we are just simply measuring what is the current flow in your body that will directly proportional to what is the blood flow in your body let's say in a four compartments if somewhere the problem is there it will clearly show that where exactly the block is if any block is there it will easily identify where exactly it is it is occurring so that kind of information we will be getting uh, in a in a ecg
So by using a simple, this, this is what the concept I told. This is a concept used in the EC3 also, but it is not that easy to easily work on materials because any electrodes, if you wanted to keep, it must be skin compatible. Because if you look at a multimeter, the two sharp needles will be there. Like this, you cannot keep six electrodes on a human body, you will run away, is right? Because it will hurt sometimes. It will also sometimes make an improper connections, improper uh, touch with the human skin. So you just have to have a proper material and proper design. So we are chemists, right? So we must do that. So we design our own material, which are skin compatible, which are skin compatible and as well as which are measuring the electric signal as like the two probe, whatever the metal leads you are using. A similarly, non-metal material we have, we have made. That means a semiconductor material or polymer we made. And those polymers we made in such a way that it measures a body potential as like that of a metal uh, uh, probes used in a multimeter. Now, this polymer we have characterized. Why? Because as I told, these uh, materials are measuring the a skin potential or an electrochemical potential of skin. Then obviously we need to do electrochemical characterization. Okay, uh, just for one minute. Yeah, so, uh, so we have done a typical electrochemical characterization to identify how good our materials are conducting and how good it is measuring the electrolytic concentrations and also well, how Stay yeah, so we have done all this electrical characterization. If anyone wants to uh, have a specific question, maybe we can discuss during the uh, question answer session. So we characterized our material uh, to prove that beyond doubt about uh, the skin conductivity measurement and as well as uh, its stability and the compatibility with the skin, everything we had tested and we made as a wristband. That means in order to remove your cloth, no one need to remove your cloth for measuring any ECG. Simply put it on your wrist. Simply put it on wrist and legs and it will measure what is the potential and it will measure the ECG as like that of a commercial device. So this is a comparison we made. So the left side uh, image I have shown, the ECG made in uh, CMET, our lab, just by rupees 1,200. <laughs> so, uh, and also we made a comparison with the commercial ECG. The commercial ECG itself, uh, more than about nearly one lakh. So if you look at, there are 12 probes will be there. Whereas the same ECG we can record by using a simple uh, three probes with the less cost. And this is a result we got from both the devices. One is made in CMET itself in our lab, and the other one is a commercial ECG. If you look at the results, both are matching and both are coming in the same uh, sensitivity and selectivity. So it shows that our ECG is uh, quite good enough, and comparable with respect to commercial model. And at the same time, the cost-wise, it is too less. That is a thing we found. And uh, the foremost thing is, the CMET technology doesn't need to remove the cloth. That means you can just simply put it on your uh, hands, in your mobile, you will receive the ECG instead. Whereas the commercial technology, you need to remove off your cloth, and we need to place all your electrodes on your cloth, on your body to get the same incident. So this is the thing we overcome now in CMET in our lab. And the size wise, if you look at it, the size of a, a ECG, what we made is less than three times smaller than a commercial one. That means you can take it as a pen. You can put it in your pouch and you can walk away. And whenever you feel an EC, you can take record of your ECG and simply watch up your ECG to your doctors and uh, you can get inferred because no one knows when the heart failure will happen. <clears throat> okay, this is a demo video uh, we have taken in our lab for a person 
It's just simply sitting and taking their ECG in the mobile. Just please watch the video. It is simply recording the ECG in a real time by using a very tiny uh, ECG model. By using the mobile phone, they can get the data and uh, they can transfer it to WhatsApp to the doctor. That means you can take ECG comfortably just by sitting without removing the cloth and you can save the ECG and compare it whenever you want. Last year, how was your ECG and your heart? And this year, how was it is? All those comparisons we can make. And also, we can consult online uh, with your doctors without going and meeting physically. And more than anything, you can own your ECG at the rate of just rupees, thousand rupees, where we are paying more than 600 rupees per test. In this cost, you can have your own ECG mission. That's what the thing we have achieved. And these are all the things I shown previously also. These are all the problem, comfortability, time, dependency, availability, and cost. This all can be overcome what we develop. Any questions so far? I will be very happy to answer. <coughs> Hello. Before going further, if any question is there, I can answer because uh, I just keep on speaking. My voice is also not allowing me to speak uh, much uh, louder. Any questions, please feel free to ask. Hello? Yeah, please. Yeah, uh, please ask your question. Hello? Yes? There was someone asking your question. I don't know. Uh, anyway. Good evening, sir. Yeah, yeah, please. Uh, sir, uh, how can I for the uh, those who are the uh, your voice is breaking your voice is breaking can you please uh, uh, sir, uh, yes. am I audible now yeah yeah please okay uh, how can buy this uh, kit uh, means uh, it can be purchased for the senior citizens or uh, anything else actually uh, whatever I am presenting is in a lab level okay whatever it made okay, okay. it is not even commercialized it is in a phase of doing that and uh, it is just for the kind of uh, introduction about our organization I am just giving it is not a commercialized okay okay sir no it's a very um, a brilliant sir so that's why I'm just asking okay 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 fine definitely soon it may come because it is in the process of doing a uh, uh, ethical clearance and a uh, lot of other clearance we need to get before coming into the market and also we need to patent it and all the other processes are going on now. Okay, sir. Okay. Thank you, sir. Welcome. Yeah. Any other questions? Otherwise, I can move for the second product, what I made for uh, prosthetic hand. Okay. Uh, I will move to the second part of this talk. I hope I have taken 30 minutes. Another 25 minutes I can complete if my Hello? voice is allowing. Yeah, please, Hello, sir. Please. please. Yeah, yeah. One please. question here. Uh, which yeah. program language you use to ECG record device? <laughs> so we are simply using Java coding and Python is a more efficient, but right now we are trying with Python also. The Java is more than enough. Okay, sir. <laughs> okay, sir. Okay, I am moving to the second part of uh, talk. This is uh, medical prosthetic for amputees. Uh, for many of you, uh, the amputees heard itself maybe the first time. I will tell you who are all amputees. Okay, whoever lost their body part 
due to the medical needs okay they are called as amputees the simple example is the diabetes patients mostly have some problem in a wound the healing wound and to avoid the spread of that wound mostly the doctors will say to remove the cut the body part and similarly cancer also if your uh, uh, knee or a uh, uh, elbow is having any cancerous tissues to avoid the further spread to the rest of the body they will ask them to remove the hand this is called as amputees whatever the amputation so if you look at a medical history in india more than 80% of the amputation is expected to happen in next 20 years why because india is a top most country in having diabetes because we are consuming a lot of a food which are having a high content of a uh, blood glucose sugar level increase so that makes india is a top most victimized country to fall in diabetes not only in diabetes any cancer patient also will have this amputation amputation means cutting and removing the body and also apart from this amputation there are normal by birth itself some people have a defects even a polio is also one of the uh, uh, same kind of a thing whereas it was not intentionally done by birth the defect has been there so if you consider the kind of a whole medical record we have a lot of a physically challenged population in our country and it is expected to increase in high number in coming year and due to this diabetes and cancer many people are losing their body parts and become amputees so this made a very big uh, alarm to my mind that why why you don't to work on uh, artificial prosthetic hands and prosthetic legs to control uh, or to make revival of uh, those life because if you lose your hand and leg then only you will know what is the importance of it so that's the main reason i was our whole group started thinking on how to make a uh, prosthetic prosthetic is, is nothing but made up of plastics or polymer based uh, wearable it never move anything i will show what kind of a prosthetics are available in the commercial market so this is a commercial model which was made by uh, panasonic india and um, panasonic private limited and they made a prosthetic so this person is lost his hand and from this limp limp means what is the uh, the remaining portion of our body after the amputation so from this limp they join a kind of a metal rods and connected this artificial prosthetics and to control this prosthetic that means to move this fingers they made a kind of a sensor if you look at there is a band black color the black color band is made on the the, the uh, arm here and these arms detecting the signal from their skin and giving the supply or a kind of a command to the uh, motor here in the hand and it is making the movement in a uh, uh, fingers so it is kind of working in such a way that there is a prosthetic socket it's nothing but the black color finger like uh, uh, elbow region and there is a motor and control as why because to make this finger to move there is a motor uh, there is a need of a motors and also sensor is essential why because you have to sense from the active portion of the uh, patient to detect the signals and then to transmit the signal as a commands to the motors to functionalize so this is these are the very three key components involved in the commercial module of prosthetic whereas if you look at the price is more than 5 lakhs is a 5 lakhs is a kind of a still a dream for many indians they cannot afford it they cannot make it even they have to uh, work for their whole lifetime to get a device like this that's a present situation in india so by look at this we just thought of having a kind of a, uh, the, uh, the uh, what i would say the concern why don't we make our own make we we have to depend on other country and other people to make the prosthetic so this is a kind of a prosthetic we made in our lab just for by spending rupees 4500 it was doing as similar to that of our functions what a commercial model is making here the fingers are uh, opened up and here it is closed down and here is the the sensor uh, has been placed on the uh, near to the elbow point 
and uh, unfortunately we have not have any uh, uh, amputees with us so we tested with the normal human being clutched to the device made in our lab we are made in our lab and uh, the sensors are attached here and the sensor gives the signal to this prosthetic hand to make the movement that's what we have done just a replica of what the foreign companies made just by a uh, very cheap amount or uh, cheap cost. That's what uh, we have developed in our lab. And I will go to the basics again, because that is what we, we are very important with, because we are science scientists. So uh, generally, if you look at uh, any prosthetic arms, it is working on, based on the skin potential, same like ECG. Uh, similar skin potential is involved in prosthetic arm also. But here, instead of skin, it is called as muscle potential. Why? Because Whenever the person is moving their hand or elbow, the muscle will get contract and it will get expand or it will get flexed. It's called as extensor or flexion. So that muscle movement will create the electrical changes in your body. For example, if the person is very normal, the output from the, uh, the, the skin potential will be very uh, normal. There will be more, no much change. Whereas if you are having a tension, if you, are, if you are having the friction on your muscle, that will give a kind of a potential impulse as the output. That output is driven as a command to operate the motor. That is a basic principle involved in any prosthetic. Now, anything if you wanted to measure from a human skin, it has to be like a skin, then only it can be measured. So, whereas Anything, if you wanted to measure, it must be a kind of a conducting. So if you have a very big uh, surge, there must be a material like a skin and it should be conducting. Then the only material can possess that is polymer because polymers are flexible. They are extendable. They are like a rubber band. At the same time, the poly none of the polymers are inherently conducting as like metals. So we need to do something to make it as a con uh, conducting. So we did a kind of a conducting composite, rubber composites that detects the muscle signals from our body and gives the input to the prosthetic arm to make a motor or a locomotor functions. And there are a lot of parameters are involved. It is not like, like simply you take a rubber band and mix with some uh, conducting filler and doesn't easily work. We need to uh, uh, relate so many parameters. One of the important parameters is the gauge factor. Gauge factor means, which is nothing but the factor which is directly proportional to the electrical components or electrical behavior of the material with respect to the strain. Because the skin is known as a very good strain material. If you look at in your elbow, there is a skin, and also in a normally on 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 your uh, face also there is a skin. Both whole human body is having a similar kind of a skin only, whereas. The skin near to the elbow having very good flexibility. That's why you are able to move the elbow like a, from 0 degree to 45 degree, 90 degree, 180 degree. Because of the skin is allowing you to bend. Whereas if you go to the cheek or near to the face, it never bend because it, it never have any such macroscopic action. At the maximum, it can go a simple vibration. When I am speaking, my cheeks are getting vibrated. That is a maximum vibration. Both the skins are having different strength. So similarly, whatever the devices you are making to measure the uh, skin potential, it have to have a similar kind of a behavior where it have to sense a vibration of a skin and as well as the electric impulse of the skin. So these all factors can be measured uh, called as a gauge factor. So we measure the gauge factor and it how to match with the skin. Then only we can call it as an artificial skin. So we are very happy that we made our own composites. Since we're having the gauge factor of 10 power 4, nothing but the gauge factor of a human skin. Now it is completely as like artificial skin. And that skin can be put it as a batch on our human body. That means wherever the person is having the limb, the, the kind of a remaining portion of the hand, they can put it simply whenever it is vibrates. It generates the electric impulse and it can be given to the motor. So that's what we have done. So we clutched these sensors on human body and we measured how the vibrations of the skin varied. So it was very linearly varying. Whenever the person wanted to move their plastic hand, they can simply vibrate their skin and it will give the input to the body. 
the, the, the input to the motors. That's what the concept is. And also to prove this, we need to make our uh, plastic hands, the prosthetic hands. So we made uh, our whole uh, fabrication facility in our lab, 24 by seven, our lab is equipped with the printing artificial hand. And also it is printing uh, two full hands per day. So like that, we made our uh, uh, laboratory well equipped and it can make a fingers, elbow, wrist, even thighs, everything. We can make it in our lab and we can well connect with the motors and electric circuit to make a full fledged device. And this is how the full demo, I will show how our uh, artificial uh, hands are working. With. So please have a close watch on uh, this, okay, yeah. Yeah, this is a kind of a sensor. Whenever the person is vibrating their uh, skin, it is making macroscope in the locomotive function. So it is now as like a, a real life given to the plastic. It can hold, it can grip, it can do what sort of a mechanical functions it can do. So it is a fully digitally developed prosthetic arm. There is no material taken from abroad. Everything is made in our lab, right from the device, right from the prosthetic, everything is made. And also it can trigger the impulse very fast. And as well as because the moment you wanted to move your hand, if the person is thought of doing it and vibrating the skin, it can easily give the signal to the prosthetic arm. And it can maximum load lift up to five kg. So that is the limit we have. Even we are looking on how to improve the, the, the weight uh, lifting of our devices. And the response time is quite good enough. We are also working on this. And also there are a lot of other devices we are working on. I don't have much time because my body is also not allowing to speak much. Maybe I can close this with, uh, here. Before closing this, I just so, uh, uh, yeah. Yeah, so uh, I wanted to justify why I am a scientist in uh, cement. If you look at a cement, it's ab ab abbreviated as Center for Materials for Electronics and Technology. I think it's a very unique because this institute has a material, it has electronics, and it has a technology. I will explain what it is. So as a chemist, I started with the material, synthesizing material, polymers, uh, chemicals, and making into a thin films, coatings, for the application of electronics. Like those materials, I made it into electrodes, patches, and as well as, as a wristband for the application for the indigenous development of ECG, uh, which are a bi biomedical application, huge potential, and medical prosthetic. So these are all the things fully emerged in a single heading, so it's called a cement. So I always be happy to be part of, uh, of our organization where we are having a handful of uh, the scientists who are working in material, working in electronics for the betterment of our society to develop a indigenous healthcare technology. And I would like to thank uh, uh, the funding agencies who are believing in my uh, in our uh, science, who are believing in our capabilities, and they funded with a huge amount of money. Especially the intelligent IoT sensor has been funded our lab. Uh, with the 41 crores for developing a fully indigenous uh, development of biomedical products and also CMET who is giving a support mm -hmm. and uh, also a lot of other students are involved because I am proudly presenting today is because these are all the effect uh, made by uh, my students. Those are all MSc students who joined me at the earlier days and this is a current group. The second row is the current group uh, who are work, working on these projects. And especially Swati is working on a material development. She's actually a chemist. And Anandu and Jidin working on uh, developing a prosthetic and electric circuits. And these are all the guys who are uh, making this project uh, into the next phase. So I would like to personally thank everyone. And uh, thank you so much for all your patience. And uh, I, I, I hope I made this time very useful for you guys. If any questions, I'm always happy to answer. And if anyone wanted to further discuss on the, the kind of uh, science collaborations or uh, any kind of understanding, you can always contact me 24 by seven in this contact details. I will be happy to associate with you. Thank you so much. Any questions? Uh, you can ask your questions on the chat box. If you are unable to talk, you can ask in chat box also. Um, sir, uh, one question is there. Sir, which program language is used to ECG record a device? Java. 
So, uh, so currently we are using a open source software because uh, the software and all we need to make uh, the app and all we need to make by our own. So currently we are using a uh, uh, Arduino based uh, uh, kind of a platform, open platform, and as well as ESP based uh, wireless communication system. By using simple Java coding, only we are doing. And also we have our own uh, team who are also working on Python based coding's for uh, making IoT based platform. Uh, development so that is in progress now we are not done much in that we are we are just on the way to do that as well i think the questions are over we'll switch to good of thanks on behalf of cement pune and the team of uh, this project uh, I'm here to spell out the word of, uh, words, a few words for your vote of thanks for the all faculty members and the students for joining in for the webinar. And uh, from the uh, depth of my heart, I would like to uh, thank Dr. Arun Kashmir, sir. He's a family to us. So, uh, from one family member to another family member, thank you so much, sir, for such an intellectual and uh, nice lecture. Thank you so much, sir. So, thank you, uh, thank you so here much. I can, uh, here I can declare the session is over. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you.